we're going to be looking at the electric and the magnetic fields and both of these quantities are vectors so it's important to have a quick review of the vector nature of qu vector quantities let me just draw a vector if this is the x and the y axis I could have the displacement ve vector what is called r like that so this vector has some change in the x direction and some change in the y direction uh, and in the z direction too although it didn't draw that so I could draw this as the x component of the vector and this is the y component of the vector so vectors have multiple pieces of information not just one thing so those are called scalars a scalar would be something like temperature or mass a vector would be things like displacement velocity momentum force Yes, electric and magnetic fields too. So how do we represent a vector? The best way is to say this. The vector r is rx, ry, rz. So this is one way to do it, but we need to say what the x component, the y component, and the z component are. Uh, a lot of times, you may see something like this too. r equals rx, x hat, plus ry, y hat plus r z z hat where x hat y hat and z hat are uh, unit vectors in the corresponding x y and z directions this is the same thing okay it just this is a shorter notation for saying the exact same thing and so i'm going to stick with that uh, another important point vectors have units okay just because they have those things doesn't mean they they don't have units they do another important thing while i'm at it there is such thing as the zero vector and it's just 0, 0, 0, which is different than the number 0. Okay, Okay. what if you want to find these components? Well, let's say I have this angle theta right there between the vector and the x-axis. In that case, rx would be r cosine theta, ry would be r sine theta. And then z, I didn't, I didn't have a z component. And that's why a lot of the, the earlier first semester physics is in 2D, because it's easier. There's, in, when we get to magnetic fields, there is no 2D. It's 3D. Okay, you can't do it in 2D. You can, okay, I know, but it's just not easy. What about this? Finding the magnitude of a vector. I'm just going to skip to another paper. So let's, again, let's say R equals Rx, Ry, Rz. The magnitude of the vector, r magnitude, is going to be the square root of rx squared plus ry squared plus rz squared. It's just like Pythagorean theorem, but in three dimensions. And yes, I'm not going to go over this. We're doing a review. Uh, if I have my vector r, I'm just using r because it's, it's useful, uh, the, the magnitude we represent with these absolute value signs. But there's another vector here called r hat r hat is a vector in the same direction as r but it has a magnitude of one so r hat called the unit vector is going to be the vector r divided by the magnitude of vector r and that's useful what about adding vectors let's say i have two vectors vector a is ax ay az and b is a no it's not it's bx b y b z then a plus b is going to be equal to the sum of the components such so as going to be a x plus b x a y plus b y a z plus b z uh, what if i take this and multiply it by a number what if i say 2a that's just going to be the uh, that scalar value uh, multiplied by each component. So it's going to be 2ax, 2ay, 2az. Uh, what if I want to multiply two vectors? You can't. But there is the dot product. a dot b is going to be equal to ax bx plus ay by plus az bz. And this is also equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B 
times the cosine of the angle between them. There is also the cross product, AX cross B. It gives you the vector, I don't want to write it out. I'll show it to you later when we get to it. But it's also the magnitude of A. This, is, this gives you a scalar answer. This gives you a vector answer. The magnitude of A cross B is the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle between the two vectors. Um, I think that's enough for review. Uh, one thing, if you subtract vectors, you subtract the components. I think that's cool. Also, you could do the same thing by just multiplying by negative 1 and then see that, that you add them. Okay, that's a good enough review. If, if this is completely new to you, you need to go back to the previous uh, chapter, the previous semester when I look at vectors. I'll include that link down below. Link below. And I'm putting that this here for myself uh, for vector review for more details on vectors. Okay, now we can get into more stuff to do with fields.